start on the, the role of the sun in British society. It has had a very big part in shaping, in a sense, our, our sense of ourselves over the last 20 years. Do you think its best days are past, though? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was once an enormous power in the land. I mean, most politicians uh, would think they couldn't get elected in the face of the opposition of the sun. It wasn't as though the sun could make you popular if you were unpopular, but they could sure as hell uh, destroy your reputation if they wanted to. With the with the old bucket of, uh, of, of the nasty stuff, as Kelvin McKenzie said there in the glory days. But the, a lot of that power's gone now. Mm. Sun's still powerful, of course, but it's really blanded out and it doesn't sort of roam the news corridors of the land as a great monster that it once did. It's much less vicious than it used to be, isn't it? It's much less vicious, more female-friendly. We heard mm. the clip there about page three, uh, which caused actual shock here in the uh, politically correct uh, <laughs> realm of uh, the BBC. Uh, but it, uh, if you look at the columnist they picked, Katie Price, for the um, the kind of face of the news one, that's absolutely perfect. Young, attractive, financially successful, um, C2 woman. It's, it's, so um, the, the marketing aspect of the sun is brilliant, has always been brilliant, and it's moved with the times. What but did the sun have that made us talk about the sun so much? <clears throat> I think we talk about the sun yeah. more than we talk about the mirror. Yes. And what is the difference? It had a total grip on social group C2, as it was known. The, uh, work, the largely white, uh, semi-skilled working class who are swing voters in elections. So these are the people you always in the British political game had to get on board. Upmarket people generally vote Tory. There are, there are some, uh, you know, rich left-wing intellectuals and um, working class people <coughs> generally vote Labour. Labour. But, you know, there, there are some Enoch Powell people. So if you could move the, C, the, the floating voters who were primarily C2 people and sun readers, you win the election. Uh, Douglas McCabe, let's talk about this launch tomorrow. As Andrew Hoskins said, this is it's not a great time to be launching a newspaper. Uh, that would probably be an understatement. Uh, <laughs> the newspaper industry is under intense pressure, both because circulations have declined uh, significantly over the last decade in particular, but they've been in decline really for 20 or 30 years. Um, but that rate of decline is accelerating. Mobile devices, iPads, iPhones and so on are making it uh, even harder to, to, to sell physical copies of newspapers. Um, advertising is also migrating away from, from print and, uh, and, 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 and onto online. So I think The Sun on Sunday is launching into a market that is significantly smaller uh, as, every, as every month passes. But, but if you're running the six-day operation, the marginal cost of running a seventh day is actually much lower than launching launching a completely new, brand new Sunday paper, presumably. Ab absolutely. So the, so, the, so the flip side of, of the very difficult territory of launching a newspaper at all at the moment is, of course, The Sun is the one brand and News International is the one company that can, that can do that. So what's happened since July is the, the news of the world was probably generating somewhere around £150 million a year. Uh, as uh, as a newspaper, I think the Sun on Sunday will be will be gunning for a figure significantly smaller than that. Realistically, it may even be about half that. Realistically, however, it is as I say the one company that's got the infrastructure in place. It's, it's got printing capacity as well. Just, and and distribution, distribution mm. is the key thing. Control, distrib con uh, the content is secondary to distribution. Particularly now, they're up against mobile devices and so on, which are a real business threat to the entire model. A game changer, really. Can we ask, um, the Mail on Sunday is the biggest seller on a Sunday now. It was the news of the world. It's now the Mail on Sunday, not much ahead of the mirror, as the Sunday mirror. Uh, will the Sun be the biggest selling Sunday newspaper? Well, again, it's led by distribution. If they've got those vans going to those shops and so on, they've, they're, they're speaking to the news agents they're day in, day out with the Sun. They just, added, they just had a seventh day. So, so the, the, the kind of momentum of distribution, I think, is... Is, is underrated as a factor against content. If you, you could have the best content in the world, no distribution is not going to sell. Uh, the newspaper industry is a distribution industry. That's where the money is in, in, the, in the entire I'm sector. I'm disappointed. I thought it was all about the... <laughs> I thought it was all about content. Well, if we turn off the transmitter now, the, you're, um, you're not going to get an audience. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen both, thank you very much. Chris Horry and Douglas McKay. Thank Great, you. thanks. 28 minutes past eight. Uh, content in sports news now. <laughs> Alison Mitchell's here. So thank you. Good morning. Well, we'll look ahead to the day's Six Nations matches in a moment. But first, Stephen Gerrard has become...